Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come into your presence once again. And Lord, we pray this morning that your presence will saturate this place, will fill this place. And we pray, O oh God, that you will fill our heart. You will uh, cause us to be fixed on you, cause our heart to be fixed on you, O oh God. Remove every distraction, O oh God. And we pray this morning, O oh Lord, that you will continue to speak to us, O oh Lord. We declare this morning that faith will arise and that, that fear will be uh, chased away from within our gathering. We pray this morning, O oh God, that Holy Hope will thrive once again in this place. Lord, we declare that our heart will be ready. We're fixed on you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. It's good to be back. Uh, well, um, whatever it is that you're doing, if you can cut out this uh, monitor right here. Okay, that's good. So that I can be... I will not lose my sanity as I preach. All right. All right. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone. Um, um, it's, it's, it's good to be back again after a week. Uh, my wife and I and our whole family was in Spain. We were in Spain uh, for the whole week. And let me tell you that while it's good, you know, but the food here is better, at least for me. All right. So, but, but it's good to see my daughter and it's good to spend time right there. And uh, I want to continue on what we have shared. Uh, this uh, past few weeks and how many of you know that this is already November Wow it's fast right uh, it's as if we just celebrate the beginning of uh, 2019 but it's you know we got two less than two months left of 2019 so let's let's make good use of it all right so uh, before I begin just want to take the time to welcome some of our family members some of our guests all the way from Bandung uh, Pastor Arlen Johan from ACC we just stand and be recognized. Welcome, Pastor Arlen. <laughs> Pastor Arlen is here with uh, her sister and her mother, Tanto. Welcome. It's an honor to have you all here. Amen. And also, the newly minted Pastor Hendy and uh, Marina, would you please stand? They are no stranger to us. All right, all right. All right, welcome, welcome. It's good to have family member in this place. Pastor Allen is one of the sta uh, pastoral staff from ECC under our uh, missionary pastor, Pastor Nala Widi. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story behind that because the first time he got a, 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 a visa to America, it was a missionary visa from our church. So <laughs> it's technically a missionary pastor from this church. All right. I still have the letter to prove it. All right. <laughs> All right, I want to share to you this morning about uh, enlarge my territory, all right, enlarging my territory, all right? I know this is probably a word that gets said a lot. You, If you've been a Christian for quite some time, chances are, you know, you probably have been uh, listening to this. Uh, back in, I believe it was 2001 or 2000, there was a very popular book uh, written by Dr. Uh, <sighs> Bruce Wilkinson. It's called The Prayer of Jabez. So back in the day, uh, in this church, we had a program called uh, uh, a Seed, uh, Seed Fade or something. Yeah, uh, you know, so what I did was that from time to time, I collected several books that I think is a good book and I distributed among our member. And one of those book, one of the book was those book, Prayer of Jabez. So uh, I kind of, I, I was kind of reminded of this prayer as I prepare myself, but I want us to look at this prayer from a different angle and from a fresh perspective. So if you would just open with me the book of First Chronicles chapter 4, you know, it's only a short verse, uh, verse 9 to 10. If I sound panting, you know, it's, it's uh, forgiven because I'm still, uh, you know, trying to get well from coughing, you know, uh, made in Spain. So, it's not just regular Cambridge coughing bacteria, you know, it's Spain, you know, so I got to flaunt it. All right, so, but it costs me to have shortness of breath when I get excited, so I hope I don't faint. All right, uh-huh, all right. So, First Chronicles chapter 4, if you will read from, uh, let's read from New International Version first, all right, because it's interesting. First Chronicle chapter 4, uh, verse 9. It says, now Jabez, uh, would you show it, Danny? All right. 
Okay, I forgot. Mine was not the international version. <clears throat> okay, First Chronicle chapter four, first nine. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, first nine. Where are you, Bible? You know, all pastor knows that you know their iPad, you know their Bible program always hide when they are needed. So, especially during sermon. All right, First Chronicle chapter four, verse nine, New International Version. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, "I gave birth to him in pain." And all mothers say, "Glory." All right. So, all the mothers in this house knows what it's like to give birth. All right, verse ten. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, "Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory." Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. All right, First Chronicle chapter 4, verse 9. All right, okay, uh, 2 10. All right, so this is that, uh, you know, in the Bible, Jabez is a name that is not get, that he doesn't get mentioned often, you know. Uh, in fact, this is the, this is about the only two verses, you know, that, that shines a good light on him, you know. And, and back in 2000, you know, this makes a very, uh, it's a bookseller, a uh, bestseller book, you know. But, um, Back in the day, you know, um, the opening tagline of this book was, "How do you? How would you like to get to to learn to say a prayer that that will be answered by God?" You know, so so in hindsight, you know, as I look at this again, I think this verse is more than just about getting what we want from God. You know, getting to know the kind of prayer that is guaranteed will be answered by God. But I think it speaks deeper than than that. So in light of what we are uh, in the middle of, you know. We are talking about being enlarged, you know, uh, and one of the things that we've been, we keep praying and praying, Lord, enlarge us, is in the area of our heart. You know, I, I thought it's fitting to revisit this uh, two verses. Um, hopefully, it will shine a new light to us, you know, um, so that we we would experience uh, the real meaning of what it's like, you know. So let's read it from another translation in in uh, New King James Version. It sounded a little bit better, you know, at least for my message. <laughs> uh, New King James Version in uh, First Chronicle chapter uh, four, verse. 9. It says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, and your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. All right? <clears throat> So, it's interesting that in the culture of you know, the Jewish culture, the old ancient Hebrew, you know, uh, that a child will be named based on their, you know, upbringing, you know, how, how you know, the temperament, you know. I remember when uh, my daughter was still in um, elementary, one of the teachers was pregnant, you know, and she happens to be, uh, I, I believe uh, it's an Orthodox Jew. So, my wife and I asked uh, in excitement, oh, do you know the gender? of the baby yet and then they say oh no 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 we don't do that you know so uh, I forgot how she explained it but it's clear that she is uh, saying uh, something that pertains to the belief of the culture of, of, of the group that uh, she's part with you know which is very consistent to uh, the Orthodox Jew you know uh, the Hebrew culture they usually they don't want to precede God and, and they usually after they have uh, kids you know after the, the, the baby were born it was was known that it was common that the baby will not be named right away. You know, uh, the parents would usually observe the kids, the upbringing, you know. And I was told that this is similar to more like the Bata culture, you know. <laughs> so if the mother was seeing something when they gave birth, then that will be your name. <laughs> So that's what happened. Look at this. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, but, you know, his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. Can you believe it? So, you know, basically, Jabez means pain. So 
thank God my mom doesn't come from that culture. Can, can you believe if your mom would name you, oh, Stretch Mark. <laughs> stretch Mark Sugianto, that's who you are, because you gave me Stretch Mark. You know, sorry, uh, we're all in this thing together, right? So all of you are going to come into my sermon, all right? I, I receive a, 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 a t-shirt from RCBC uh, last week, two weeks ago for Pastor's Appreciation. And the t-shirt reads, be careful, every word you say will end up in my sermons. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is giving that, you know, deserve a raise. All right. So imagine, you know, your mom tell you, oh, headache. You know. Oh, headache, Susanto. Because you give me headache, you know. Or, you know, uh, oh, how about uh, itchy pilot? Because <laughs> I don't know, when I, when I was pregnant with you, I, I felt itchy all over my body. Can you imagine, you know, nickname? And it's, it's, it's not fun. Can you imagine having to grow up? I don't know how he, where, which high school he went. But if he were to go in the same high school that I went, this guy would be, you know, end up being a mental case. Because I know my high school. We're, it's an all-boys school. You know, even when you are normal, you know, they always find something to pick on you. So having to come into a high school with a name, what's your name? Pain? <laughs> I mean, it's like a fresh bloody meat being thrown into a den of wolves. Uh, you know, it's like, pick me, pick me, you know. Pain, you know. Can you imagine? <clears throat> but that's the truth, you know. You know, sometimes we would want to have a good surrounding. We would have to have, we, we would want to have a good circumstances in our life. But in reality is that it's not always the case. So how are we going to make the best out of the circumstances that we are? So when you understand this background, you understand his prayer in a different manner. All right, especially in the New King James Version, if you read, it's slightly different, you know. New International Version says that I will be free from pain, but actually that's not his prayer. His prayer in New King James Version, it says that I may not cause pain. So actually, this is, you know, we, we lose sight of the real important things of the prayer, but instead we zoom in on, enlarge my territory, bless me indeed. You know, yeah, okay. I believe if we belong to Christ, we should not be afraid whether or not we're going to be blessed. Hello? I mean, it's okay to want to be blessed, and it's not a sin to pray that God bless you. It's not. It's really not. But you got to understand that when you you become the children of God, blessing is part of the equipment, it's part of the package. That's something that you need not to worry. You know, it, it will be the same like going to theater and worry, will there be picture? I mean, you go to theater, you know there will be picture. But whether or not it will be a good movie, that's what you need to be worried. Because you pay money for it, alright? So, actually the essence is, you know, it's when he prayed, that I may not cause pain. Pain. So it's actually Jabez knowing full well where he came from, knowing full well the stigma that is attached to him, that he is a pain. He was one that was born out of pain. He was one that caused pain. But his desire is that God bless him so that he does not have to live up to the name that was attached to him. He does not want to be the nickname that society... You see, it says here that his mother... I look in this, you know, my commentary. Ooh, I gotta pick up my breath. All, right. all is well, all is well. Okay, you know, the word mother there, you know, it's a feminine noun meaning a woman. But what's interesting in the commentary, in the word study, is that it says that a nation or a city is sometimes viewed as a mother of its people. So, so in that sense, this word, the very word, the mother, you know, that was being used in this passage, is sometimes used to refer to a nation that is being, you know, so, so it's like uh, 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 the motherland, you know, we refer. So imagine for us, maybe in a modern context, this word will read, you know, uh, 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 the society called Jabez 
fill in the blank, all right? Jabez has his mother to name him Pain. We have the society or the nation or the culture to give us name. What are they? You know, I want you to understand that we are all a product of the culture that we are in and sometimes it labels us. You know, I want you to know that you are not your mistake. I want you to know that you are not your failure. You know, I've failed many times. But you know what? Every time I read the Bible, that's what I love about reading the Bible. You know, I get to see hope. You know, and instead of seeing the obvious, my failure, I get to see hope. And that is exactly why Jabez was praying and crying to God. Lord, I am fully aware. I am fully aware of where I came from, who I am, what the wake that I have created behind me. But Lord, I'm praying that you bless me indeed. So that going forward, I will not be my past. So that going forward, instead of being a pain, that I do not cause pain. But instead, wherever I go, I will bless people. Does that make sense to any of you? Any one of you? Amen. This is, this is really the essence of his prayer. And I like to think that when it was says Jabez was more honorable than his brother, that this prayer has something to do with that. The fact that instead of living up to his condition, his circumstances, living up to the limitation that was given to him, instead, he broke free from those limitations. You know, he says, you know, Lord, that you enlarge my territory. The word territory, it means your border. Actually, another translation, Lord, enlarge me from my border. You know, one of the meaning of the word border is to confine. It's to confine. To limit you. What limits you? And I don't even need to remind you how many times the remembrance of our past limit us to believe in what the future is holding for us. Many times, you know, what, you know, maybe our parents, maybe in our case, we're exactly like Jabez, our parents, you know, bless their heart. Many times they did not know any better. Maybe they're not, you know, in the Lord yet. Maybe, you know, they, they I, I mean, before my parents get to know the Lord, I can't even count, I lose count of many, how many times, instead of blessing, you know, they say things that are derogatory, you know, oh, you are just hopeless, oh, you are, oh, you know, that man has hope, but not you. I can laugh now, but back then I was like crying. <laughs> can you imagine? This is Jabez. Hey, that we had a past, I think that's what makes us all the same. That we had unfavorable upbringing, and you know what? It's a dime in a dozen. It's not just you, it's also me. But what will set us apart is, how are we gonna live out from it? How are we going to burst forth from that border? How are we going to break free from that stigma that is attached to us? Oh, you know what, Indonesian, oh, Indonesian, you know, uh, you know, oh, Korean, uh, not, we, our resident Korean are not here, you know. <laughs> oh, it just sounds like you American, you know, okay, because this is a house of all nations, so we gotta, did I miss any nation here? <laughs> you know, whatever it is. His prayer is that, Lord, enlarge, that I get to live beyond the boxes that was being placed on me. And the current boxes that was being placed on him is pain. Yeah. What's your boxes? What's your boxes? That was being placed on you by the authority, by your mother. By the culture that is above you. Oh, you know what? Me, oh, you. Oh, Pastor, you know what? I am the first one to go to college in my family. And when I left, you know, they all say, Oh, you know what? Our family is not built for college. You will not graduate. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I've heard people say that. W what were your name? What were your nickname? I was stick on you. By your mother. By the society or the culture that you grew up with. What are those? You know, 
Now that's all the more reason to look at Jabez's prayer and apply it on us. Lord, bless me that I get to outlive the nickname that was given to me by my enemy, by my society, by my broken past, by my bondage, by my failure. I once was lost, but now I am found. I once was blind, but now I see. Amen? So, you know, that's what, that's what really matters, you know. So in, in, in New Translation, it was like, his prayer sounded like this. God bless me, enlarge my territory. Let your hand be on me. Help me succeed in all that I do. And let that happen so that I won't be a pain to others. But instead, that I'll be a blessing to others. I don't want to be a pain to others. I want to be changed. I want to change. And I know you can do it for me. Bless me, Lord. When you look at that prayer from this slide, it's not a selfish prayer. Hello? I mean, it's, it's a prayer that comes from somebody who knows that he's severely limited on his option. But he's pleading to somebody who is beyond limit. You know. What has been the stigma, the label that was attached to you all this time? And that for some reason, if you're honest, you begin to believe you are dead. You know. I can name so many things. But that's why I pray, Lord, help me. That's why I believe, I, I, I like what Pastor Craig Groeschel says, you know, Christ, is me, Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desire in me. Christ in me is stronger than the wrong desire in me. I said that prayer I don't know how many times. You know, Christ in me is stronger. Did, did I become s Superman after that prayer? No, I still stutter. <laughs> But that counters all that lies. Counters all the lies that keeps circling right here and keeps sounding right here. You know, you are not your mistake. You are not your past. You are not your failure. That we can fail, that's reality. That's the truth. But the truth is, it should not define us. It should not keep us in shackle. Amen? So, I want to encourage you as we talk about enlarging our territory. You know, from the point of view of this writing, you know, the culture, the society where this writing was given, you all know that they are a nomadic tribe, they are a nomadic people, you know, they are people that raise herds, cattle, you know. So, territory is important and it's a physical, geographical grazing land, you know. And so, it's important for the livelihood of, of, of their, uh, the herd. But you got to understand that in the modern culture, context like us, you know, I mean, we're not praying, Lord, enlarge our territory just for our influence, our work. But I like to zoom in on the very territory that matters. And I believe that, you know, many people look at this prayer and they think, oh, Jabez was actually praying so that he will be influential. Uh, he will have influence. You know, the word influence, it means the power to exert power over other people. You know what? I believe knowing where he came from, how he was raised, knowing the kind of mother that raised him, this is more than just praying to be influential, but this is a prayer of affluential. This is a prayer for affluence. He's more worried about what is in him. You know what? Before you pray, Lord, help me so that I will become an impact, you need to worry first of what is in you because whatever is in you, that is going to be the very thing that you flow to impact others. Amen. Hello? Yes, you will influence others. Even if you are not saying anything, you're standing, you will influence others. You know, so it's more about influence. It's more about affluence. It's, it's the, uh, the abundance that is in you, the flowing that is in you. So, you know, he was saying, you know, Lord, that, that bless me indeed, enlarge my territory. To me, to us, in this modern context, our territory, it should start within. The first territory, your territory, first and foremost, is not your job, it's not your influence, it's not your house. 
but it is your heart. There's one territory that was given to you and trusted to you, to your care, that you cannot delegate on other people to take care of. So I'd like to pin this prayer this morning to this understanding that when Jabez was praying, Lord, enlarge my territory, because he's struggling with bad image that was exerted by his authority. Don't you think he needs help to maintain his heart? Yes, he does. Somebody who's been through traumatic experience, you know very well, you need to confess. You need power beyond you to influence what is within. That's why prayer helps. If there's one thing the Catholic gets it right, is you know, they says, you know, confession is good for your soul. You need to say it. You need to cry out to God. You know what? You need to be crying out to Him and say, Lord, enlarge my territory. And you better mean it. It is your heart. Enlarge my border. Because many times, whether you're going to grow or not, it's not God. But it's something within you that limits you. It's something, you know, the word border, it means confinement. So whether or not your heart sets you free for growth or confine you into smallness, only you and the Holy Spirit knows. So you know, this prayer becomes a whole new, different prayer. Jabez was praying, God, that you bless me indeed. Enlarge my border, enlarge whatever, whatever it is that can find me to grow into the standard, into the level that you want me to grow. Lord, whatever it is, your hand would be with me and you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. That I may not cause pain. And then it says, so God grant him what he requested. Wouldn't it be great to have that prayer that we say to God be granted? Amen? Come on, church. You know, so, you know, <clears throat> it's okay to ask for blessings. Hello? Come on, everybody, believe in this. It's okay. Come on, everybody say, it's okay. <laughs> Come on, turn to somebody and say, it's okay. <laughs> What's the base on that, Pastor? Simple. Jesus' word. Matthew 6, you know, 28, 34, Matthew 7. Matthew 7 says this. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Matthew 7, verse 9. For, uh, Matthew 7, verse 7. Verse 8 says, For everyone who asks, receive, and who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Verse 9, Or what man is there among you who, if his sons ask for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? How much more? Many of you maybe will say, well, Pastor, but that's a, in the context of the Father giving the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but let's not forget, it also sheds light to the true nature, to the character, to the giving nature of our Father. The fact that He's a good Father who knows how to give good gifts. Hello? Amen? It's okay to ask. Ask. Matthew 6, verse 28 says, So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass in, of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, or you of little faith? Hello? Are you worried about your clothing, or you of little faith? Well, the fear is real for some of our ladies, so... Therefore, do not worry. Everybody say, do not worry. Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. You know, what Jesus was saying is that if you worry about those things, and you position, you just position yourself as unbelievers. Are you listening? If you worry about your daily needs, and you just... Remove yourself from the bin of people of God to the unbelievers, to people who does not know the Lord. That's what it says. You know. 
After all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Come on, everybody. My Father knows. Come on. Your Father knows. Fathers knows best. Amen? We have with us the good Father who knows how to give good gifts. It's not only okay to ask for blessing. You know, He's the kind of Father who gives blessing. All right? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But then again, He doesn't stop at that. He doesn't stop with just, ask me, I'll give to you. He doesn't stop with just, oh, come on, come on, come ask. You know, verse 33, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You know, don't worry about tomorrow. Are you listening, church? So is it okay to ask for blessing? It is. But you got an understanding that we are not one that just come to the Lord to ask for blessing just for us. You know, the truth is we have needs. But you got an understanding that don't just fix our eyes on the blessing. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things shall be added to you. You know, you got to hear this. The blessing can start from you, but it should not stop with you. Are you listening? The blessing can start from you, but it shouldn't stop with you. You're not a container. You're a dispenser. You are to channel. You are to flow it out. You know, you are to flow it out. The blessing can start from you, but it shouldn't stop with you. You know, uh, Genesis 12 says, I will bless you. But then again, let's not forget, it says that in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. The real reason why He even bothered with us and blessed us is because He wants through us His blessing for all the families will flow out. So it means we are blessed to be blessed. We're, we're blessed to channel the blessings. Under that understanding, you know, Jabez, get it right. I am blessed to be a blessing. But he started out with not blessing. He started out with a curse. Because he was a pain. So he understands full well. I'm not going to live out my life to be pain. That's why he said, Lord, instead of pain, bless me indeed. And launch my territory so that I will not cause pain. Are you listening? Have you failed in the past miserably from time to time? Have you had to fight the stigma that was given to you by your parents maybe or by the authority? Have you had a traumatic experience that was etched deep in you that caused you, you know, to, to understand, oh, you know what, maybe I am that what it is. I am telling you this morning there is power in the redemptive power of Christ and you can shake it off that instead of having to live with the name that was given by society or the authority, you can pray to him, Lord bless me indeed and enlarge my frame of understanding, enlarge my heart so that I will not cause pain, so that I will not have to live on all those names, on all those negative identity, on all those things that were said to me, on all those things that has been pin on me I don't have to live with that labor I don't want to cause pain and if you pray that prayer basically just pray Lord make me useful for the design that you have set me to be and that is a prayer surely guaranteed will be answered by God because what you ask is not for you but what you ask is that his kingdom come his will be done through your life on your life as it is in heaven are you listening church come on somebody we need to have our heart enlarged we need to have the first territory that must be enlarged it's not our career it's not our understanding it's not our influence it's our affluence. It's, it's what's within. It's what's flowing within. 
It's our heart. Worry not whether you're going to influence somebody, but worry what is influencing you within. Because what is influencing you within will end up flowing outside and influence other people. What is in the heart flows out. We're just like toothpaste. Whatever you squeeze in will flow out. And if it reads toothpaste, toothpaste that will come out. If it reads preparation H, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> or if it reads, you know, uh, I don't know what other medicine. <laughs> Basically, what you squeeze, the content that's inside will flow out. What will flow out out of you under pressure? That's what you need to be worried about. I am preaching this with awareness how I need Him more and more in my life. My family can testify to me. Whenever things got heated, I crack under pressure. There's a joke about crack, but I'm not going to mention it here. <laughs> but, you know what? I pray this prayer, Lord. I came from there. But I don't want when I get here that I emulate what is there. Right there is my failure, is my negative, you know, identity, you know, what people said, which maybe there's some truth in it, but I'm living in here and now and today, and there's new grace for today. There's a new mercy for today. And Lord, I don't want to relive what I lived there. Enlarge my territory, Lord. Enlarge my heart. I'm a product of dysfunctional family. But Lord, going forward, don't let me cause dysfunction. If ever you're going to use me to restore dysfunction to your family. Are you listening? Enlarge my territory. That's the blessing. It's not wrong to ask for blessings. But don't ask for blessing for the sakes of blessings. It's got a mission. There's got to be a redemptive purpose in it. It's not wrong. But you got to have the right heart. The God got the right purpose. You need money, you can ask God. God, I need money, but not just for myself. But also so that I can support your work. That I can give to others in need. Lord, I need a car, but not just so that I can just go wherever I want to go, but so that I can help maybe drive people to church or help them to get a job or something. God, there's a skill I need to improve. I need to get better at something, not just so that I will be better than other people but so that this skill I can use to help other people get better. I need a home, Lord. But I want that home not only for me to become my casa, to become my dungeon, but I need a home where I can open it and extend hospitality to other people because that's what really pleases your heart. Remember, the Bible says, never fail to practice hospitality, even to strangers. Hello? That's what the Bible said. You either believe in it or not. God, I need a better job. Well, not just for my own provision, but so that I can give. I can give. So that I can share. You know. Come on, church. Isaiah 54 says that, you know, enlarge. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your course. Strengthen your stakes. For you are spread out to the right and to the left. Enlarge. And this morning, we need to enlarge our territory. And by saying that, I'm referring to your heart. We need to pray, Lord, enlarge my heart. As I begin, you know, as I step into the stage, my prayer, as I first started, was that, Lord, enlarge our love for you. Enlarge my love for you. How long have you been a Christian? How long have you followed Him? 
<clears throat> I followed him for more than, you know, I became born again Christian for more than 30 years now. But to this day, I'm still praying, Lord, there is so, still so much more that I am yet to know about you. Lord, enlarge my love for you. I want to love you more today than yesterday. I want to love you more tomorrow than today. And I want to grow in my love for you. I want to enlarge. I want to continue to enlarge my heart. You know, I, I, I don't ever want to live a life that gets to the part where I say, you know what? Ooh, I'm better off than the rest of the people. Oh man, I have arrived. You know, as much as the Bible says that we are the temple of God, how can you contain God in your small, puny self? How can you contain Him? His grace and mercies are new every morning. So what I'm simply praying, you know, just like Jabez, Lord, bless me and enlarge me. Continue to grow me. Continue to. Do you believe that you're still growing? Hello? You know? Do you believe that you can still, you know, growing spiritually more than you already are now? Don't ever put a limit. You know, that's why Jabez says, enlarge my confinement, my border. And sometimes borders are not just a mile marker, but it's what here. Sometimes border is a limit, you know, a label that people put in you. And sometimes it's something, you know, that is birthed out of your, you know, unwillingness. Oh, you know what? I, I, that's just as far as I go, Pastor. That's your border. Uh, you know what? I don't do that. I, I can't do that. That's not me. Who are you to say that's not you? Hello? Who are you to say that's not you? Do you create yourself? Maybe you do. You invent yourself in your own puny little mind. But as for God, when He created you, you are faithful and wonderfully made. You are perfect. There's no limit to where you can grow, how you can grow. The only limit is when you say, this is as far as I can go. This is as far as I want to go. This is as much as I'm willing to give. This is my border. This is my territory. I pray this morning that instead of living life like that, that we become to be like Jabez. Sometimes being born out of inconvenience is really a blessing. Because you know, you know you have the struggle, you have the drive. I want to get better. I want to go out of my circumstances. You know, sometimes being born with all the abundance, lavishness, no problem, everything provided. You know what? Sometimes it could be the biggest prison ever. That costs you not to see where you need to grow. Sometimes it can be a bondage. You know, picture in mind this cartoon uh, drawing. You know, remember the, in the old days when they kept prisoner? They don't just keep them in the dungeon, but usually what would they do? They would put them in shackle on their feet. Remember that? Yeah. And that shackle is connected to a big chain that connected to it. A big concrete bowl. Right? Remember that? With the whole notion that so that you don't get to depart from where you are. Your dungeon. Your place of confinement. That's physical. But what I worry the most is the spiritual bondage, the spiritual shackle. So this morning, I, I want to plead to you. Let's pray together, just like Jabez. Lord, enlarge my heart. Enlarge my territory. I want to I wanna pray this two things. I, wanna, I want us to, con to focus on these two things. When you pray, pray this prayer. Lord, enlarge my heart that I will have, number one, that I will have heart more for you. Heart more for God. I want to grow more. I want, I want to know you more. More of you. Lord, isn't that what Solomon prayed when he was offered all the options? What do you want, Solomon? Riches, power, kingdom? What he prays was, I, I, I want your wisdom. Because I want to know you more. I want more of you. You know. I want more of you. And number two, you know, let's pray this when we pray, enlarge our heart. Lord, enlarge my heart so that I have heart for more of others. 
for more of others. So that I am not just consumed with myself. So I am not just consumed with I, me, mine, myself. You've tried to meet your need and what you have is limited. And you try to conserve, 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 safe. And you're still lacking. Why not try God's way? God's way is that give and it shall be given. But if you don't have room for others, if all the room there is is for you, it will be difficult to follow the word of God. So my prayer, as I conclude my sermon, as we cry out, Lord, just like Jabez, Lord, bless me. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my heart. I pray that you will focus on these two things. That you will ask Him for heart that is enlarged for more of God and heart that is enlarged for more of others. This is my prayer for this church. This is my prayer for myself. And I'm praying that God will begin to flow within us, transform our heart, and that He will answer the desire of our hearts. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. <clears throat> it's not a new word, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will refresh our understanding. Father, whatever labels, whatever situation, whatever circumstances, whatever bondage, whatever dungeon, whatever limitation, whatever confinement, whatever border, that we have grown from, oh God, whatever past experience, whatever final uh, failure, whatever, whatever, whatever negative experience that we've experienced, oh God. This morning, oh God, we know because of your word that we don't, that should not define us. But what's more important, oh God, that should not confine us. So this morning, we pray just like Jabez, we come to you and say, Lord, bless us. We know that for us to be able to live the kind of life that you have designed us to be, we need your blessing, Lord. We cannot do it on our own. And we know that you're the kind of God who say, ask me, ask. And we know that you are the good God who loves to give. And we know that you are not just a good God, but you're the good Father who knows how to give good gifts. So we'll come to you this morning. Bless us, Father. Bless us. Bless us. Come on, would you just put your hands on your heart right now? And let's just pray, Lord, enlarge my heart. Enlarge my heart. Enlarge whatever it is that is confining me within. Maybe negative words, negative identity, maybe confinement from other people, maybe my failure, whatever it is, oh God. Lord, that it will not define me, that it will not confine me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Enlarge my heart, O God. Enlarge my territory, O God. Enlarge my heart, O God. That your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil so that I will not cause pain, Lord. So that I will not lift out, O God, the curse that was set on me, O God. So that I will not emulate all the negative, the past experience, the confinement, whatever it is that the enemy has launched at me. But instead, I will become a loudspeaker of your grace, O God. I will become a masterpiece of your beauty, O God. Instead, O God, I will become a dispenser of your grace. Instead, O God, I will become, O God, the extension of your source, the never-ending, everlasting source. Source. Instead, <coughs> instead of my worst nightmare, that I will live my greatest expectation in you, God. That your kingdom come, your word, your will be done on my life as it is in, he in heaven, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Enlarge our border. Your hand will be with us. And you would keep us from the evil one and that we will not cause pain, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.